Welcome back to Cedar Porch Homestead. I'm Courtney and we are in the kitchen today and I want to show you how we make our einkorn sourdough bread. So you might ask yourself, what is einkorn? It is a wheat, but it is an ancient wheat. It hasn't been hybridized like today's modern wheat. And that means that there are better health benefits for you. The main one is that it is better for people, even if you have a gluten sensitivity, it is normally easier for people to digest. It has less gluten, and especially if you do it in a sourdough form, it has broken down some of those enzymes and your body is able to better assimilate the nutrients and digest them. It has more antioxidants, more vitamins. Um, it hasn't been, there hasn't been a lot of chemicals used on it, so it hasn't been sprayed, it hasn't been bleached, it hasn't been bromated, all of that stuff that makes our modern wheat not so great for you. Einkorn hasn't been touched by. One of the, I won't say drawbacks, but just one of the things to know when you go to start working with einkorn is that it is more tricky than a modern wheat. Um, you have to change your recipes. You have to find some good recipes that have been modified for einkorn. Um, I'll show you a little later one of the cookbooks that I have that has really helped. It's actually where I got this recipe from. It's harder to work with in a sourdough form because it's a wetter dough, so it's sticky and it's harder to work with but I promise you, you will get it. The more practice you do, the better it will be. And even if it comes out looking nasty, it will taste delicious. It doesn't matter what it looks like, your family will still eat it, it will still be delicious. I do have a couple of things that will make it easier to work with. I have done it on just a flat stone. I have done it without a proving basket. And like I said, it works. They don't look the best. They get flat, it still tasted well. Tips though, get a Dutch oven. It has made it so much better to have a Dutch oven. I decided to go with an all cast iron one because I'm not gonna cook with this otherwise. This is just gonna be my bread baking Dutch oven. And so I went with all cast iron. It was already seasoned and I don't have to keep reseasoning it because I just use the parchment paper when I bake the bread in it, so it's perfect. I just keep it in my oven out of sight all the time and I use it every week for my bread. Uh, the second thing is getting a Vanaton proofing basket. This has made a huge difference in forming and shaping the dough. And at first I had a hard time with it sticking to the basket. And one of the things, this is the third trick, is I started using rice flour to dust inside of it. And since I started using the rice flour, it dumps out and I don't have to coax it out every time. So that would be the other thing. And I will link below the Dutch oven. This is a five quart Dutch oven. And uh, I will link below, I actually got this as a kit. It had a banneton basket with uh, the liner, it has a dough whisk, a bread lame, which actually is kind of neat. It's much better than using a serrated knife to um, score your bread. And it comes with the, it, uh, the little brush and a, um, a bread scraper. <laughs> been too much bread today. Um, so those are the, the tips and tricks to help you. And then I will show you what we do and how we form and make this bread. Now I know sourdough sounds daunting. Um, you think that it's gonna take a long time, that there's a lot involved and um, that's true and not true. So I have found the best way to do this that takes really the least amount of hands-on time and you don't have a lot of discard and there's just a lot of things that I have worked through and I'm gonna show you what I do to take the least amount of time. So I started with, um, Heidi's, this is Heidi, Heidi Ellis, and it's baking and cooking einkorn. Because einkorn can be tricky. It is not like regular flour when you go to cook and bake with it. So this has been a really helpful book, and I will put a link below for this book. Uh, there will also be a link below to another book um, that I really want, but it is in my cart, my Save for Later cart on Amazon. Who else has like 100 plus items in their Save for Later cart? Because I do. But um, I'll link that one down there as, as well because you know all the help that you can get baking with einkorn, the better. So in her book is where I learned how to make the sourdough. This is straight einkorn sourdough starter. Um, it is just 
einkorn flour and water. And that's what I, I started my starter from scratch, according to her book, and it works out beautifully. And so this has been in the refrigerator since last Wednesday. It's Wednesday today. And so it's been in the refrigerator since last Wednesday because I have found the best way so I don't have to keep track with feeding it by keeping it out on the counter. Because if when it's warm out on the counter, you have to feed it more often. And so I bake with it, I put it in the refrigerator, and you either need to feed it in a week or you need to get it out and I just use it that way I don't have to feed it. But like say I didn't want to bake a loaf every week, I would just take it out after it's been in the fridge for a week. I leave it out for an hour so it's easier to stir and I feed it and you would put it back in the refrigerator until you either, either needed to bake with it or to feed it again. So that was a lot. Basically, you feed it or use it every week when you leave it in the fridge. It's the easiest way. I don't have to remember to feed it when it's out on the counter. That's just the way to do it. So let's feed it. <clears throat> so one of the things I haven't mentioned, when you're working with einkorn, it's really better to weigh it because that way, because uh, fresh ground flour and flour that's been sitting um, and gets compacted, it's going to be different if you're using, you know, a fourth of a cup or a cup, whatever. It's just going to be different. So uh, weighing it is just the best way to go. You'll get the best results, the more consistent results when you weigh it. So I have my scale. I'm going to turn it on. And... Oh, let me zero it out. Put it on there. I'm going to zero it out because I'm just going to pour right into here. And to feed it this first time, once you get it out of the refrigerator, you want to feed it 48 grams. Let's do it a spoonful at a time. It's not a big deal if you go over 48, a tiny bit, but you know, you want to get as close as possible. So we're at 42, oops, 45, <laughs> 45. All right, we'll just put a little bit more. And well, see, we went to 50, it's no big deal. It'll work out just fine. And then I'm gonna zero it out again. And we need to put uh, 30 grams of water in. And this goes a little faster. Okay, that's 19 or 20. Oops. Let me clean off that. Okay, 33. 50, 33, 48, 30. You know, it's all right around there. So it's good. And then I'm just going to... It's just in there. Can you see it? Okay. And then we're just going to stir it up. I like just to use a long knife because it gets me to the bottom. Sorry, I know this is loud, guys. Okay, but you just want to really get to the bottom and stir it up well. And I scrape the sides a little bit. And then I like to get it kind of flat in there. And I'll show you why. For some reason, I find it very satisfying and fun. Okay. So, so you see I have a rubber band. And so now that I've fed it, I'm going to move the rubber band up to where it's at and when we look at this later this afternoon I will show you why I like to put the rubber band there so this is fed for the morning and we are not going to touch it again until this evening let me get my top and I just put a what has worked out well for me you can put you know a cheesecloth or linen or something like that um I know there's no airflow with this one, but I just still, I use plastic wrap and it's worked out fine for me. And I just uh, close it with a rubber band and I'm gonna leave it on my counter until this evening. So now let's do the evening feeding. It's right before bedtime. I like to do it um, later in the evening. That way I know that the starter is going to be on the inflate in the morning and not needing to be fed because it, you'll just make better bread if it's still on the inflate. So. Earlier today, I did the beginning feeding after taking out of the refrigerator, and we did a normal size feeding, which is 48 grams of flour and 30 grams of water. 
And for this evening time feeding, we need to double that. And so we're going to do 96 grams of flour with 60 grams of water. So come in closer and I will show you. Remember we talked about putting the rubber band when we fed it this morning. And that's so that I can keep track of how much it inflates during the day or how much it rises during the day. Cause you want it to rise, you know, almost, almost to doubling. And if you can see right here, this is how much it's ri risen today. So that's a good sign. <clears throat> so we will put this on here and zero it out again. And it's a real simple, just like this morning. We're gonna put our 96 grams of flour. Okay, and then we will take, we'll zero it out and take our six grams of water. Oops. And if you spill, you don't have to do this. I just like to wipe it off because I want to make sure that what it's weighing is what is actually in the cup, not on my scale. All right, 64, it's okay if you go over a little bit. And then again. Cooking is, is messy, that's okay. Stir it real good. You get your arm workout in. Just wanna stir it up real good, make sure you get to the bottom. Get all that good old starter mixed in with the new flour and water. And the same thing as we did earlier, I just like to scrape it out and kind of make it flat. And again, that's just personal preference because I like to watch and see how much it, it rises. So tomorrow morning, it actually will be at the top, if not pushing my plastic out a little bit. So again, just, and that's it. We're gonna leave it here overnight. And the next time I see you, it will be when we are putting our flour um, together to make the bread. Okay, so it's the morning of day two and it is time to put our bread together. But we're gonna start with, again, weighing the flour and the salt. So you need 720 grams of your einkorn flour. Let me get this on here and zeroed out. I'm not showing you that today because I can't see around my bowl, so just trust me. We're gonna do 720 grams of flour and it's quite a bit. I'm gonna dump all that in there. Okay, 720 grams of your einkorn, 15 grams of salt. All right. We're gonna mix the flour and the salt together before we move on. Zero your scale out again. And I'm gonna move on to putting the starter in there. Now, the directions say, oh, first let's look at the starter. So this is where it was last night at our second feeding when we doubled the feeding. And you see it has risen all the way to the top. It's just fun, it's just fun. <laughs> um, okay, back to the starter. You need, so the directions say to put the starter in a separate bowl. You can totally do that so you don't have to pull some out if you put too much. Again, I just put it right in the bowl. It just, for me, it's just easier. So we're gonna do um, 220 grams 
of the starter. Take your time. Because you can pull some out if you pull, you know, put too much in there. You can carefully pull some out, but if you just take your time and let your scale catch up and get your 220 grams of starter. And now that you're done with your starter, I'm going to set it aside, but once you're done with your starter, what you want to do is feed it again, the 48 grams of flour and the 30 grams of water, cover it back up and stick it in your refrigerator until you use it next week. So your next and final ingredient is your water. And you want to make sure that you use filtered water. And this goes, I don't think I said this for your starter. You want to make sure that you're using filtered more importantly non-chlorinated water because the chlorine will just kill all the good microorganisms and everything that's in it so non-chlorinated water is what you want to use so we're going to zero it back out and the directions call for 445 ounces to 470 ounces i have found that um i like it still varies you have to know your climate you have to know the time of year it's you're gonna to have to experiment on the water part of it so I use anywhere from 420 grams to 440 grams so I use quite a bit less than what she calls for but we're in South Texas and so it's humid I think sea level you know goes into that altitude but anyway so I'm gonna use 420 to 440 you're gonna to have to experiment to see what works for you so we zeroed it out we'll put our water just right on top of your starter and I'm gonna have to fill this up again okay Mine ended up for now because I over poured at 436 grams, but it's all good. It all works out in the end because you can always add more flour. So now we're just gonna mix it together. You have to remember that einkorn is less glutinous than um, the new hybridized wheat. And so you don't wanna work it as much as you would uh, a normal flour. We're just gonna scrape the sides and fold it into the middle. And you just keep doing that until you form a nice shaggy dough. And it's okay if not all of the flour is incorporated because we are going to let it sit for 15 minutes and let the einkorn uh, soak up more of the flour. And this looks a little dry today, so I'm just gonna put a little bit more water. Because before you leave it to set for your 15 minutes, you want at least all the flour, see the flour in the bottom? It's not sticking to the, the rest of the dough ball. You want at least that sticking to the dough ball before you let it sit to soak it all up. Tell you what, making bread without a kitchen mixer is a great arm workout. We'll let that set for 15 minutes. Okay, so the 15 minutes are up and we are going to come on in for this. We're going to scrape and fold and you see a lot of the 
flour has uh, been absorbed. You want to do this like four to six times. And you see this is much stickier. If you've made bread before, this is, there's a much higher water content on this bread. So it's, you got to get used to that as well. Okay, and for the most part, the flour is mixed in. So I am not going to let this sit for another 15 minutes. But if your flour is still not mixed in, fold it in four to six times and then let it sit for another 10 to 15 minutes. And your dough is going to look kind of rough like this and that's okay. That's kind of how you want it. Just going to scrape all my spatulas. And we're going to cover this with, I know I'm using a lot of plastic wrap. I would like to find another alternative, but for now, this is what I have. So you use what you have. You want to cover it tightly with plastic wrap. Once you have it covered, we're going to put this in the oven for six to eight hours. Make sure that your oven is off and that you remember that your bread is in there throughout the day. I have done that. You want the oven to be off and you're just going to put it in there for kind of a warm place. Um, if it is really cold in your area or if your oven light only puts out a little bit of heat, you can turn it on. Uh, I have found that my oven light is super hot. So I do not put it on there because it just about starts to cook it. So we're going to put it in our oven for six to eight hours without the light and we will mess with it later. Okay, so I have uh, taken the bread out and I'm going to unwrap it and let you see what it looks like. It has risen and we're going to keep this plastic wrap because I'm just going to wrap our proofing basket to put it back on the refrigerator for overnight. So coming closer, you can see the small bubbles as it's risen. And to me, this is the hardest part of the whole thing. Um, because the dough is much wetter and stickier than when you're using traditional flour. I say traditional flour. Our new societal flour. <laughs> but, um, so I'm going to make sure that you flour your workspace real well. I'm using a uh, plastic cutting board because I have wood countertops and the wood countertops in my dough scraper don't mix very well. So if you have quartz or granite, just do it directly on your countertop with some flour. And like I said, the dough is very sticky. You'll see it doesn't just plop out. I have to scrape it out. So you want your hands to also be very coated with flour so it doesn't stick to you when you're working with it. And I wish y'all could smell this. It smells so good and sour. Okay. And I'm just going to continue to work with these two utensils and have a, what is this called? A pile of flour <laughs> to, you want to grab the flour while you're working with it and tuck it under. And you're just going to be tucking, pulling, and folding over. And again, we're trying not to overwork our einkorn. 
but you need to work it enough to where we're going to shape a bowl to put into our proofing basket. So I'm gonna make a round structure. And there are many um, videos on YouTube on how to shape this, because I will tell you guys, and if there are any expert bakers that are gonna happen to come across this, this is not where I shine, but I am practicing and you just need to practice over and over, watch some videos, and if you don't make it perfect, that's okay. It will still taste great, it will rise, and your family will still love it. They have not complained once. And my first couple looked pretty scary. Okay, and I know this is not how YouTube says to do it, but I have found with this really sticky dough and this einkorn, this is how I have to do it. So at the end, I'm just trying to make a bowl. And sometimes that happens and you just keep going. Okay, so I've made my bowl and I'm really trying not to overwork this. And you want the rounded side put down in your proofing basket. And I'm gonna wrap this up. Okay, so I have it in my proofing basket. I'm gonna cover it with that plastic wrap that I had earlier. And we are going to put this in the refrigerator for 12 to 15 hours. Um, I just like to go ahead and do it in the afternoon. That way it can go in um, the refrigerator overnight. And I will meet you back here in the morning and we will bake this bread up. is the third morning and I took my bread out of the refrigerator about 30 minutes ago. At the same time I put my Dutch oven into the oven and turned it on to 475 degrees and you want that to heat up. You want the Dutch oven to get nice and hot and you don't want this out too long. So I do right about 30 minutes and that seems to be good for everything. So I'm going to unwrap this. Now hopefully that I have dusted my proofing thing enough that it's gonna pop right out. Sometimes I have to coax it out. So let's see. Yep. <clears throat> and I turned it right out on some parchment paper because we're gonna take the, the loaf and the parchment paper and this is what we're gonna drop inside of the Dutch oven. This came with the kit that I will, I talked about earlier and that I will put in the comments below. Now I'm not very good yet at making great designs so i just come and cut some slices and it's different every time sometimes i just do this sometimes i kind of make a crisscross pattern <clears throat> it just depends we'll just leave it at that and y'all can see what that looks like at the end let's take our that German out and be careful. Just drop it in there. It's nice and hot. And then I'm going to put our lid back on.
And then it goes in the hot oven for about 25 minutes. So I forgot to tell you, when you, when you put your bread in the oven, go ahead and turn it down to 450. So we're just going to take our top off right now of the Dutch oven. Look at that bread. And then we're gonna let this go for another 15 minutes. Okay, so our 15 minutes is over. It should be done. Look at that. Very carefully, I go ahead and pull it out and put it on a, a rack to cool. And the directions say 15 to 20 minutes once you take the lid off. And I have found from my oven that 15 works. And you can kind of hear it sounds hollow. So you just have to do what works well for you. Okay, so y'all ready for the most exciting part? Let's taste it. First, so it has been on the drying rack to cool off for an hour. You don't want to cut into it until it's been cooled for at least an hour. But we can't wait any longer than an hour. <laughs> we really like our warm bread. And plus, once right after it's cooked is when the crust is that really crunchy, awesome crust. Later on during the week while we're eating it, it's still nice and chewy, but it just doesn't have that same crunch. So let's taste it. And you can use a bread knife. I have this big serrated one and it seems to do well to cut through this tough bread. Put a little bit of butter on there. Full scoop of butter. That was a little, a little big. Butter's good for you. But that's a little big. Uh... Mm, there you go. Well, guys, we appreciate you hanging with us through this video. If you have any questions about what I've done, put them below, and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and as always, make sure you like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.